So what are we doing today? We're doing a thing called factoring and we're going to understand how factoring works. Then we're going to tie it in with what we studied in the last unit. So one. So you remember when we had equations that looked like this, we called this the standard form. We could take our standard form and we could turn it into something else. So for example, if I had x squared plus 3x plus 2, the intercept form of this thing, specifically, the intercept form looks like x plus 2 and x plus 1 as our solution. And that would be our intercept form. Now, another use of factoring is this thing called solving. You could solve for some y value. In this case, let's say I wanted to know where our x-intercepts were for our original equation y is equal to x squared plus 3x plus 2. I could literally go through and go x squared plus 3x plus 2. And I would find my values and I'd know that my roots are x equals negative 2 and x equals negative 1. And you'll notice that there is a correlation here between the intercept form and our roots and there's some form of link between examples 1 and 2 here. And we'll eventually get there, but the first thing that we're going to study is how to take this and turn it into this. Okay, that's what we'll be doing. So now let's move on to the concept of the day. So for this problem, we're taking a look at x squared plus bx plus c. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to change that into something that looks like this. x plus f and x plus g. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to show our objective at the end of the sheet here. So let's go, let's write that out now. Our Originally, we have x squared plus bx plus c. And what we're going to do is we're going to take what we have and we're going to work backwards. So at the end, we want this, x plus f and x plus g. And in order to build up back to this part, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to apply FOIL. So let's do that. Let's comply FOIL. So now what that means is we're going to have x times everything in the second bracket. And you're going to get x squared plus uh, gx. Okay. Now g and x, the reason why that is is because g is just a number. Okay. Now here's the next part. We're going to go and multiply f times everything in the second bracket using FOIL. And we're going to get uh, fx plus fx plus f times g. Wait a second. We have something here. See this fg? It has to equal the c value at the end of our problem there. Okay? So here's what we'll do. Let's continue on and let's see if we can find some more interesting information in our calculations. So... Now we've got x squared, and remember, when we did our calculations, we always had to bring the middle terms together. So if you think about it, we literally have the letters that are sitting in front of the x's as being added together. So we have f plus g in a bracket in front of f, x. So it's kind of like we're showing that we're adding the two to get and multiplying by x plus fg. So now if you think about it, this part here matches this part. So 
when we have our original equation x plus f and x plus g here, the f and g must equal the c value. That's what we're saying here, right? But then also, the middle term, for the middle term of our problem, this part here, f plus g must equal the final b value in our problem set. So if I know that I have c being the multiplication of two numbers, then if I know those two numbers, and then I can find two numbers that add, use those two numbers to add to the middle number, b, then we've got a solution. So now, how are we going to do that? Let's go take a look at our examples. Pause the video, make sure you've copied this down, and then we'll go do those examples. All right. So let's take a look at a problem that we have here. So let's say we have x squared plus 3x plus 2, just like we started at the beginning of the lesson today. Okay, and we'll call that example 1. And here's what we're looking for. We're looking to use the concept of the term factoring. So if you see the term factor or factor fully, this is what I want you to do with this type of specific equation. If I have x squared plus 3x plus 2, so what we're looking to do is we're looking to find two numbers that are going to multiply to 2, but then add to 3. Okay, and what I tend to do is I tend to create a little box here that holds all the information that I need for the solution for this thing. So I'm going to go through all my possibilities. So two numbers that multiply to two. So those two numbers that multiply to two are basically just one times two. Now you'll notice that once I've got that, I'm going to go and take a look and see if 1 times 2 adds to the number 3 here. And we just check. So 1 plus 2 gives 3. Uh-oh, okay, that's perfect. So since that's right, we're going to use that in our brackets. So here's what we do. You set up your problem by writing on the next line. You're going to write equals bracket x bracket x bracket. And then we go and plug in. Now it's notice this is actually plus 1 and this is plus 2. So I'm actually going to put that into my bracket here. So I've got x plus 1 and x plus 2. Now here's the thing. If you're not sure, you could check by simply expanding. So... I just check so x plus 1 x plus 2 expand so x squared plus 2 x plus 1 x plus 2 combine the middle terms plus 3 x plus 2 guess what we're done it's perfect so we are good now another way to check is just check 1 so you check 1 times 2 2 perfect 1 plus 2, does that give us 3? Yes, that's perfect, and we're good. You could do that as well. Now, let's move on to the next pro problem. Okay, so let's take a look at this next example. Let's call this example 2. It's going to be x squared plus um, 7x plus 12. All right, now here's what we're going to do. We're going to use the same concept that we studied just now. So remember, we have to look at the last term. We always look at the last term and we're saying, okay, some number that times is to the last term, 
but then adds to the last term, 7. Okay, so I'm going to make my little box here so I have an idea of something to focus on. So now, let's go. Let's go through all the possibilities. Um, 1 times 12, that works. 1 times 12, but does 1 plus 12 give us 7? No, it doesn't. So I'm just going to cross that out. So now let's take the number 2 as a factor. So 12 divided by 2 is 6. So 2 times 6 is that, yeah, 12. Okay, so now let's see. 2 plus 6, does that give us 7? No, it doesn't. So we're going to cross that out. Can't use that. So now the last bit, let's check. 3 times 4. So 3 divided by 12 is 4. Okay, all right. So now, so 3 plus 4. Does 3 plus 4 give 7? Yes, it does. I'm going to circle that, and we're going to get this thing done. So now our final answer is going to be, well, x and x in brackets, and then we replace the space with plus 3 and plus 4. And that is our solution. So now, I guess the next most difficult problem will be a problem where you have, say, a minus sign and a plus sign. So let's do that right now. Let's call this example not so nice. Not so nice. Here we go. So let's say that I have a problem like this. Um, I need you to factor. And the problem is this. So let's say I have x squared minus 7x uh, uh, plus 12. So we're going to apply the same rules that we studied before, where we were looking for something that times is to 12. Notice it's positive 12 here, but then adds to not 7, but negative 7, but then adds to negative 7. So now we have our little box, and we have to go through all the information. Now, here is the rule. Because it times is to negative 12, sorry, positive 12, that means both numbers are negative. And here's the reason why. Negative times negative gives us a positive, but the addition of two negatives gives us a negative number. So let's do that now, shall we? So here we go. So two numbers that multiply to negative 12. So let's go negative 1 and negative 12. Does that work? No, it doesn't. You add those two together, it doesn't work. How about negative 2 and negative 6? Does that work? Negative 2 plus negative 6 gives us negative 8. No, it doesn't work. How about negative 3 and negative 4? If we add those two together, negative 3 plus negative 4 gives us, oh, almost crossed it off. It is good. It is good. So let us write our solution. So we've got negative 3 plus negative 4, and we've got this. So now we just write as our bracket, x and x with the space, and then we put minus 3 and minus 4. Doesn't matter which order we put it in, and we've got our solution. That is it. Now, let's tie it into our graphing, okay? So, let's say that I have the following problem. And this is my equation. Y is equal to x squared plus 15, 8x plus 15. So here's what I want you to find. I want you to find the, well, I want you to find the y-intercept, 
the x-intercepts and that's it and possibly the vertex and then from there you should be able to graph okay so let's say I wanted to find the y-intercept so we start with the y-intercept so we go y-intercept and we'd let x equal 0 and you go through and you get 0 squared so 0 squared plus 8 times 0 plus 15 the final answer is 15 so that means my y-intercept is 15 so I could use that and I could graph that on my graph so that's the first thing now I need you to find the x-intercepts so for the x-intercept this is what you'd do. You'd say 0 is equal to, well, uh, x squared plus 8x plus 15. This is what you do. This is where what we have studied comes into play. What you're going to do is you're going to find, you're going to imagine you're looking just at this, this half of my equation, and we're going to factor it. And I'll explain to you why in a second. Okay, so now, so we're looking for two numbers. Two numbers that multiply to 15, but then add to 8. So let's do that right now. So 3 and 5. Yeah, that works. 3 and 5. 3 and 5 multiplies to 15, but then adds to 8. Okay, so now here's what we do. We write 0 equals, and we do what we did before. We write x bracket, x bracket, and then we're going to fill it in with what we know. So we got plus 3 and plus 5. So now that we have this, we've essentially turned our original equation, y equals x squared plus 8x plus 15, We've used something that's similar to our intercept form. And here's what we just found. We just found the roots. The roots are x equals negative 3 and x equals negative 5. So that means our x-intercepts are x equals negative 3 and x equals negative 5, which is what we wanted to find for our x-intercepts. And of course, you could go and find your vertex by finding your AOS. And what we'll do is we'll zoom in on this. So remember, we have our AOS. And when we calculate our AOS, we just make sure that we Say x is equal to, well, negative 3 plus negative 5 from our roots that we computed before, which are right here and here, and continue divided by 2. You end up with x is equal to for our vertex, x is equal to negative 4 as our final answer. And then we just plug it. Plug x equal negative 4 into y is equal to x squared minus plus 8x plus 15. Get your answer, find your vertex graph, and you're done. And so, you see how this works. Factoring is tied in with our graphing. Okay? So like I said, that's all we're going to do. You have three types of problems. You have two types of problems that you're working with. You're going to factor. And then the last part would be to use our equation to help us graph by finding the x-intercepts. So if you have a problem refer to these videos
to see how to do said problems. Good luck.